Welcome to Stampin' Peace with Mary Nabe. I'm so happy you're here on this Friday. It is Funfold Friday. I will be sharing a couple of treat packaging ideas for you. They make great little stocking stuffers or um, secret Santa gifts or things to put on your Christmas table or take to a holiday party. Um, and then I'll also be showing you a new gift card holder style. And um, we're going to make it once and then we're going to make it a second time with a little bit different variation to it, which adds to the fun of those um, giving gift cards. Um, a couple of things I was going to show you. I don't know if all of you have seen this. This is my dollar store star that I just adhered some pretty Stampin' Up! Designer Series paper on. I um, heat embossed uh, the Peace on Earth sentiment, switched out the jute hanger for some pretty... Um, but I just wanted to tell you, if you are not a dollar store shopper, like I typically don't, but I've started just popping in there. There's one right by my pharmacy. Um, I just picked up the star for $1 and I made it into something special. And today when I picked it up to show you on Facebook Live, I thought, oh, I should have covered the back with a pretty paper as well and make it two-sided even. Um, so I think I'm going to do that. I even thought I could do this side in red, white, and blue for the patriotic holidays. Um, so anyways, but uh, I went back to get more stars because I had only picked up one and they didn't have any um, and they didn't have any other really Christmassy ones, but I found this heart. They had one of, <laughs> I guess Stellar Store is hit and miss, but I had one of these and I thought, oh, I'll use some of our new, new designer series paper from the Sweet Conversations suite that is in our... Um, January to June mini catalog coming up on January 4th. Um, if you were not with me yesterday afternoon, which actually took the place of one day, Wednesday evening's Facebook Live, um, yesterday, December 9th, on my Facebook Live, I featured, again, some treat packaging. We wrapped some holiday treats. Um, what were they? Twix and... Reese's um, trees, Reese's peanut butter trees, um, wrapped them with some designer series paper and then stamped and colored some images from the Be Jolly set. And all of these are video demonstrations. So they're all on that Facebook Live replay. This is a package of um, mint icebreakers. We just decorated that fun container. And then we also decorated some of the, what I call the movie candy boxes. And there's a fun trick I showed to um, making this and featuring both sides. And you don't even have to cut the paper to feature that reverse side. So it's a lot of fun, take a look at that. And then finally, we just wrapped some little um, mini candy bars and stack them and tied a ribbon around. So all of these are featured on my December 9th Facebook Live video replay. And I will be posting that to stampinpeace.com, my blog, over the next few days, as well as today's um, video demonstration as well. If there are no, oh, look at all of you on here. Hello, Gladys and Michelle. Michelle's from Naples. Oh, I bet it's warm and nice there. Okay, hi, Beth and Dana, Pam, Sharon, Kathy. I'm so glad you're all here. Actually, we have two Sharons on today, so welcome. I'm going to flip my camera around. You Would you please share this Facebook Live and invite others to join in watching this because you're going to love these projects I have for you. So here is what we're going to package first. This is the Lint Mint Chocolate Truffle Bar or milk chocolate, not mint chocolate, milk chocolate. Um, you can find them pretty much anywhere. I got mine at Target. Uh, and 
Well, I'll sh let's make it and then I'll show you a couple, a couple of others. I'm starting with a piece of designer series paper. I'm gonna adjust this just a little bit. All right, I'm starting with a designer series paper that measures four and a half inches by nine and a half inches, four and a half by nine and a half. And the first thing that you're going to do I am so I am so sorry Facebook it really is being glitchy today. It keeps flashing off and then right back on. I mean, it's not even off for a second. It's just a moment. Yesterday it was perfectly fine during the Facebook live, so I have no idea why it's doing that. So four and a half by nine and a half, I scored at one inch on each end. And then I'm going to score, I'm gonna make three score lines in this direction at one and a quarter, two and a half, three and three quarters. And like the treat favors I showed you in yesterday's Facebook Live, whoops, all of these are meant to be made very quickly and easily and with minimal supplies and with supplies that you already um, have at home. So need, no need to buy anything extra, all right? But it's just a fun way. Oh, Marsha, I'm like you. I set so many alarms for myself so I don't forget meetings and appointments and I'm so glad you to know you're like me. The, that alarm feature on my phone, oh, I love it. So on the small flap, okay, the first three are the same, one flap is smaller. On that one is where you put your adhesive and we're just creating like, um, I guess you could call it a box, but it's a triangular shape. So just kind of, line up these edges think the stamp and seal plus because it's a real strong adhesive and this is my preference for when i'm making 3d items because of its strength um, you can also use um, tear and tape you can also use our multi-purpose glue any of them will work and you're just going to match up those edges and then on the ends, uh, at each of these little flaps, there's that score line here, that one inch score line all the way around. I'm just going to go from this little, the middle of this little panel to each of the corners. I'm not measuring. If you just approximate, it'll work. Just each corner on the right and then the left. And then you'll have these triangular flaps. And you're gonna fold these in. And on one of them, you're going to add adhesive. I'll use my Seal Plus. Even many glue dots work well for this on the ends. And you just wanna press it in place. Then you can drop in your lint, um, chocolate truffle bar, push it down. And when you push it down, that's a good way to make sure that um, the adhesive is holding nicely. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite end and start at the middle outer, or the, the middle of the outer edge, I should say. And you're gonna cut to the right and then to the left And then you'll be left with three more of those triangular flaps and you just fold them in on the score line. And on one of them, you're gonna add your adhesive, whatever you're using, and you're gonna press that down. So now you just have this nice little triangular 
um, box or tube, whatever you want to call it. And now I want to decorate this a little bit. Sentiments. And I'm using Merry Christmas. And honestly, I don't know why I did this. But I used this for something, oh, last week. And I didn't put the stamp away. And now I'm trying to remember what stamp it came, what stamp set it belongs to. So after this Facebook Live, I have to um, look for that. So if any of they and any of you recognize it and want to tell me, help me out. Otherwise, I'll go to my shelf and look through them all. Actually, I want to banner cut this end. This piece of cardstock is soft seafoam because it coordinates with my painted Christmas print that I'm using. And it measures three quarters inch by four and a quarter. Three quarter banner cut that. And I'm going to stamp the sentiment. Now, my um, desk mat here has a little give to it, so I don't really need to add anything underneath. But when you are using the, I've got ink all over this, when you're add, using um, the photopolymer stamps, these are the ones that you can see through, they're clear, you should use um, either like a mouse pad or your foam uh, platform from your Stamparatus or purchase one of our $5 uh, Stampin' Pierce mats. Because when you work with photopolymer stamps, they need a little bit of cushion. You don't have that cushion on these stamps like we do with our rubber stamps. All right, so that's the reason for this. Using Stampin' Dimensionals. And I'm just going to put it on one of these front, front panels of my triangular box like that. These could even be used for place cards at your holiday table. Um, and um, it would look, look really neat. And you could part, put each person's name there if you wanted. Oh, Dana, you think it might be from... A paper pumpkin kit. Okay, I'll check that too. I didn't think of that either. I'm trying to think, did I? Yeah, because I was making gift card holders with the last paper pumpkin kit, the one with the tree and the snowman and the pile of presents. And then just tie. pretty wrap a ribbon and try tie a pretty bow on the front and it's all set to go of course you could even stamp and um, punch or die cut images to add the painted Christmas um, suite has some wonderful stamps of pine cones and berries and sprigs and that would work really well. um, covered the lint milk chocolate truffle bar. And here's a couple more that I made also with the painted Christmas designer series paper. All right, got that. And like I said, if you weren't, uh, if you'd missed yesterday, oops, what am I doing here? I moved my whole mat. If you missed yesterday's Facebook Live, you'll want to go and pull up that video as well. I haven't posted it to my blog yet, but it will be posting soon. All right, here's the next thing we're going to make. Now, I've used early espresso cardstock as the base. A lot of times, we don't, excuse me, we don't think of using um, browns with our holiday colors, but early espresso, crumb cake. These are colors that really do work. They're neutrals. So they really do work with our reds and our greens that we use. Um, and in case you haven't guessed what's in here, these are for stockings for my adult children <laughs> at Christmas time. Um, the lint truffle bar and the um, peppermint bark also. One thing to keep in mind when you are packaging, um, food products, 
candies, things like that. A lot of people nowadays are very conscious of the food products, especially because of allergies. So um, damage that part of the packaging in any way. I like to uh, wrap things so that either they slide right off, like in this case, or when you pull off the wrapping, it doesn't damage that part of um, the food packaging in case people need to be real conscious of that. So let me show you how I did this. It's kind of a, a, big, a big special treat. I think they'll be surprised. I don't know that I've ever... All of the treats I featured yesterday and um, the couple I'm using today, I did purchase at um, Target. So I've started with a piece of cardstock that measures eight and a half by seven and a quarter. And the seven and a quarter, oh, I don't need this now. The seven and a quarter is from the height of the bar. Hi there, Mary Lou. Because it's not morning, it's afternoon. <laughs> Makes me wonder if you're um, away someplace and not in Ohio. Or is it just feeling like a, a long day and feels like morning to you? So for this, just like yesterday, we really did not score when we wrapped the candy bars and um, the... Um, candy boxes, things like that. Same thing with this. I'm really just cardstock onto itself. And I'm not, not bothering with um, scoring. So I pulled a little flap over, and then I just take my fingers and kind of crease that first corner, that first edge. And then I pull up the remaining cardstock. And I'm gonna pull it kind of taut And I'm making sure the sides of the cardstock line up on each end. I've got the base covered. And I can still, this is pretty snug. It's snug, but I can still slide the bar in and out. Okay. Now I've cut a piece of real red cardstock that measures one and a half inches by seven and a quarter. This is one and a half by seven and a quarter. For you, those of you that are just jumping on a little late and, and I will um, show you the treats that we made yesterday as well. Since this is peppermint bark, I decided I would use some gingerbread and peppermint designer series paper. The entire gingerbread and peppermint suite is retiring. I have not checked today to see what's left or not, but if you would like any of it and it's still available, I would get it soon, like as in right away before it retires because anything on the retiring list is available while supplies last on, it's gone. Oh, there we go. So I've cut um, the gingerbread and peppermint designer series paper comes in six by six sheets. So I've cut these in half to be three by six. Again, I'm keeping things real easy. And part of that is um, how we cut our DSP, the dimensions that we use. And I mounted on a piece of olive, just coordinating color. And the, this cardstock measures three and one eighth by six and one eighth. So the DSP is three by six and the cardstock is three and an eighth by six and an eighth. And I'll just adhere that to my bar. Well, come on, there we go. Just centering it there. You can see how quick and easy this was to put together. To embellish or decorate my bar, I'm using the Label Me Fancy and the Label Me Lovely punch, which work really well together for layering. I'm stamping 
a sentiment from the Frosted Gingerbread Suite or stamp set. And since it's a peppermint bark bar, I'm using Sending You Peppermint Kisses. I'm stamping in real red. And again, I'm the Label Me Fancy Punch. I'm going to add this to my old olive label with a couple of dimensionals. Whoops. And then I'll put the label right on the bar, right in the center. You can put it anywhere you like. I'm choosing to put it right in the center. And of course, if you wanted to add any embellishments, ribbons, bows, rhinestones, whatever you like, you could do that. So that's another fun treat. All right, now that we've seen lots of treats yesterday and a couple of more today, how about we make a couple of gift card holders? Um, the ones I've shown over the last week and posted to my blog, stampinpeace.com. Um, though, though, I think you're going to like this next version of gift card holder as well. Um, and I'll, sh I'll show you both of these. These are ones, you know, we don't have to recreate the wheel. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, oftentimes, I will pull from my stash, stash of cards, in this case, my stash of gift card holders, and just remake them with current Stampin' Up! product that I have. So this, I think both of these I made a few years ago. But this is the one, and the bottom right here is a pocket, okay? And you could use it for a card if you want, or a gift card holder. And one thing to note is the sides are not actually adhered. It's the ribbon that's wrapped and tied with a knot that's keeping that pocket together and in place and still works perfectly with your gift cards. And then here's the second one. And it's it's a very similar version. These um, sides of that bottom pocket are not adhered, but they're held in place by the ribbon. But look at this. The gift card would fit right in here so that when whoever receives this and opens the card, it has this little pop-up feature. So we're going to make one of each is going to help me. So I've decided, once again, I'll use my gingerbread and peppermint paper. It's retiring, so I'm trying to use up a lot of it. Um, and for this, we're going to need a top and bottom piece. All right, I'm used, it needs two different designer series paper. So for the bottom, I'm thinking we'll use this piece. And then, oh, that's got adhesive backing on. That's okay, though. I'll use it. And then maybe this for the top. I should see if I have a scrap of that before I, you know, I try to use up my scraps first. But this is something I often do. And I was going to cut and prep everything um, and then I decided, no, I'm not going to do that because I want you to see the process I go through um, when I'm casing something. Remember, cases create and share everything. Um, that means if, if we see it out there, put it out there, everybody else is free to make that as well in their own way or to copy it. So let's get some real red cardstock going. Oops, that's cherry cobbler. Because I need a new pack. I still get excited to open up a brand new pack of cardstock. You know, it's the little things, right? <laughs> holders. We want to start with our cardstock measuring four and a quarter by eleven inches. Okay, four and a quarter by 11 inches. 
So I've got my designer series paper chosen. I've got my card stock base chosen. Now I need to do some measuring to see where to um, do the scoring, see what those scoring lines are. Got way too anxious. There. So what I do is I just hold up the end and actually it's a little better to do it on this side because you can read right down here. You can also read across the top if you want, but I tend to do this. I put the edge at the top and so now I know, okay, my first score line is at three and a half and my next one is going to be at nine inches. Okay, do you see that? I've got the edge at the top so the first score line one is at nine inches. So that's what I'm going to do now is score my cardstock. And see, I don't even have to take that other gift card holder apart to remake it. Oops, let's make sure I have the right blade here. So I'm scoring at three and a half and at nine inches. And I'll use my bone folder. Get some nice, nicely creased edges there. And then I'm going to refer back to my sample. I'm going to measure the designer series paper. Now this tool isn't something we sell. You can find it in like the um, sewing quilting section of um, Joann's or um, I don't really think Michael's and Hobby Lobby sell it, um, but Joann's, any kind of sewing shop or quilting shop should have it or something similar. So my designer series paper on top by four inches and the bottom one measures one and three quarters by four. So again, three and a quarter by four and one and three quarters by four. So I'm going to cut this at four inches, turn it to cut my three and a quarter. So that's the top. Now, if I wanted, I could use the reverse side of this, and that's perfectly okay too. But instead, I've chosen this um, piece of designer series paper. And this needs to be in a quarter, which is pretty darn close for a scrap. So I will first adhere this to that bottom. This is the part that's going to form my pocket. And the other piece is adhered to the top flap of our gift card holder. Now I do want to have a nice neutral for the inside of this. So I'm cutting basic white to be five and a quarter inches by four inches. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the second one and then I'll have it for the second gift card hold. Oh, no, well, for something else. The other one's gonna be a little bit different so it won't use the same size. Now, I am not going to stamp anything just in the middle yet. Not sure if I want a sentiment in the middle or not. So I'm going to just go ahead and adhere it. But if you feel better about stamping first before adhering, please do that now. This is wonderful. Yahoo. All right, and what happened to my, there we go. Look at a brand new package of Real Red cardstock and a new package of a new bolt of my Real Red sheer ribbon. This has been my ultimate favorite from our holiday catalog. I love this. 
So now if you feel more comfortable and you want a put want to put a line of multi-purpose glue here. Now if you're using it as a card, I probably wouldn't adhere that at all. Probably not even not even with ribbon if you just want to use it as a greeting card. But because I'm using this for a gift card holder, I do want to either adhere it with some multi-purpose glue on the sides, or I can adhere it, form the pocket by wrapping a ribbon and tying small flap closed and forming the pocket. like that and then I need to add something festive and fun I kind of created a mess over here with all my paper and the scraps and stuff so let's see what we have and I'll pull this over here too so you can see that but out here so we might use those. <clears throat> Some of the shapes in the designer series paper you can fussy cut. Others you cut out with the coordinating dies, which is a lot of fun. Um, and of course, ooh, there's so many choices. Look here, the mittens and the stars. They also have, um, see here's some that you can cut out with the um, dies. Let's do that. I want some of these ornaments of the different colors. So let's go ahead and with my mini stamp and cut in emboss machine to this is pretty. I don't know. I feel like I should do something with that little strip. But let's go ahead and cut out some of these ornaments. Does anybody have the gingerbread sweet, the gingerbread and peppermint sweet, or the frosted gingerbread bundle? I to cut these apart a little bit. When you um, are cutting this DSP and you're cutting apart the parts that you want to die cut, be conscious of where you're cutting, be cut with the dies, so you don't want to cut right through them. You know, you want to maximize your um, designer series papers as much as you, you can. Oh, hi, Chris from Iowa. Thanks to all of you who have shared. I appreciate that very much. Melinda says she does have this bundle. Every time I use this, I get reminded of um, baking with my mom and my sisters when we were young, and then also baking with my own daughters. And they are 30 and 20. And actually, John, Andrea, um, Andrea's fiance, John, um, he enjoys working in the kitchen too. And Andrea told me they might be making. Um, what did she tell me? Sugar cookies. I think they said they were going to do this weekend. So I do think that's something that um, my girls will enjoy doing in the future with their own spouses and children when the time comes. How can you not be happy when you're baking Christmas goodies, right? Or just baking in general. Kathy, I love the um, gingerbread peppermint, gingerbread and peppermint memories and more cards too. I had a lot of fun um, doing a Zoom products and everybody had rave reviews with it. All right, so now I'm just going to add these. I think I'll let one overlap at the bottom here. And I think I'll add these with dimensionals because what's a card without dimensionals, right? <laughs> I know, it's terrible. It's, whoo. 
but there are worse vices than needing dimensionals on all my cards, right? <laughs> something like yeah I kind of like that all right and gosh what to put inside now I'm thinking oh I probably should have um stamped first oh look at this I could put that right in there yeah I think I will stamp Wishing you a Merry Christmas in real red. Again, if you're using a photopolymer set, one of those where you can see right through the stamps, it's best if you can use um, a stamp on top of the stamp. The Stamparatus foam mat will work. Even a mouse pad, if you have one of those. there so it makes a really nice festive card but then also a fun gift card holder i was looking to see i should use up some of my gingerbread and peppermint acrylic maybe i'll just add a few few here and to do that these are really fine and they're a little tricky in my opinion but they are fun nonetheless. Let's see if I can find. I don't know. Maybe I just want some of the dots. Did anybody get the... Um, I don't even know where I want to put these. Let's just try to put them in the middle here. Did anybody get these embellishments? They're not necessarily cards that you're mailing because they are a little, um, they are pretty thick. They stand up pretty high, but they are fun nonetheless. See what I mean? How they stand up pretty high. But there are some fun designs in there. Not, oops. Guess you can see the designs better when I spill them, right? <laughs> All right, so there is one gift card holder. And as I said, we have um, a second, I have a second one pop-up feature. So let's go back to that one. So here's that pop-up feature, right? So once again, I'm going to show you um, from start to finish how I would case this or copy this. I know that the base is going to um, be four and a quarter by 11 inches. So that's what I've started with. And do you remember how we um, measured? Let me pull this so you can see the top of it. Three and a half inches, and then the second score line is at nine inches. So I'm going to do that now. scoot some stuff away so score at three and a half and at nine inches and I'm going to set this aside for right now I'll go ahead and um, 
choose some designer series paper now. How about, oh, this is kind of fun. How about this for the top and what's on the back? And we can use the bottom or the back side for the bottom. So the top piece of designer series paper measures four inches, quarter inches. And the bottom piece is four inches by one and three quarters. So really, when you think about it, doing it this way, cutting your designer series paper, one sheet of designer series paper, if you're making them the same, would um, give you what you need to make two of the gift card holders. Now, the other part that is different is this, this white piece. So let's measure the size of this white cardstock and figure out what the score lines need to be. So this is inches by seven. Let's cut that first. There's seven inches. three and three quarters. And then I need to note what the score lines on that are. So the first score line is a half inch, looks like, let me double check. Yep, half inch. And then the next score line is five and a quarter. So half inch and five and half inch. and five and a quarter. And I'm gonna set this here because we're going to need to refer to this when we're putting that inside piece in. So let's make our base up first. You want to use your bone folder to burnish each of those score lines very well. Whoops. Okay, that did not, I obviously was not um, pressing. There we go. So three and a half inches and nine inches were the score lines. Let's add our designer series paper. Your top piece of designer series paper, once again, is four inches wide by three and a quarter inches tall. And the bottom piece is four inches wide as tall. On your other piece, you're actually going to be um, folding the two score lines in opposite directions. Hi there, Wendy. Oh, Fran says she has this bundle too. I love the gingerbread and peppermint. The whole suite, really. Um, but the bundle, awesome. All right, so there I've done it. I've, you know, it doesn't matter which way you go as long as they're scored in opposite directions and make sure you burnish those folds really well so they lay nicely. And then what you're going to do is you're going to adhere that top flap to the of your open um, top of your card base. I don't know if I said that correctly. Hi, Jean. Thanks for joining me and for sharing. I'm so glad you're here. So put your adhesive there. And what I'm going to do is I'm adhering it to the bottom of the top flap of my gift card holder, but I want to get this edge as close to that score line, as close to that fold as I can without going over it. And that looks pretty good. And then that should just lay right in place just like that. And then here is the, so this is what's going to hold our gift card. 
Okay, so now I'm going to close up that pocket. And when somebody opens this, the gift card will pop right. Once again, I'm going to um, use some ribbon to form this pocket. I think for this gift card in particular with this pop-up piece, I think you're better off adhering the pocket with this ribbon wrapped around it and tying a knot than you would be with adhesive. Because if you just get too close to that white with the adhesive, this isn't going to pull up and out very easily. So my suggestion would be that you adhere it with glue or any other adhesive on the sides of that pocket. I just don't like taking a chance of getting some of that adhesive where I don't want it, and then it makes it difficult for that piece to um, pull up and out. Isn't that fun? So I need some kind of sentiment here. How about, oh, they're all fun though. I think I'm gonna do Happy Holidays and one of, I think I'll do that with the Happy Holidays. Oh, it looks like I haven't even used this one. So it's a good thing I chose that. I have a thing about when I open up my um, stamp sets, I always feel bad if something retires and I haven't used it yet. <laughs> Oops, that's vanilla, I want white. Um, but I feel really good, not just when I've used a bundle I've purchased, but I've used every stamp in there or something. Um, I don't know, it's weird, I know, but it just makes me feel good knowing I've used everything I can in there. I'm gonna ink this up. You know what, before I stamp this, I'm going to just banner cut that end. I'm using a piece of quarter inch basic white. These are pieces I just have left over. Like I always um, cut a lot of the inside. Whoops, where's the other one? Um, here it is. I always have a bunch of my inserts pre-cut. I'll do like a whole package or two of cardstock at a time and I cut them to five and a quarter by four inches. And then I'm left with a bunch of um, of these half inch strips, which I keep because they're perfect for um, narrow sentiments and banners just like this. So I'll I banner cut one end. Oops, I wish that was down just a little lower. Let me try again on the back. There we go. And then I'm just going to snip the end. I'm going to add my gingerbread snowflake. Where am I? Here they are. My desk was so nice and neat when I started. <laughs> it's like a disaster now. Did you hear my trimmer fall just a few seconds ago? Ah. Oh. And then I'm going to tuck that, ooh, maybe I need to move it over here a little bit. Or by the ribbon, I'm not sure. But if I scoot that knot over just a little bit and lower that ribbon, just slide it down a little bit, and I'm going to adhere it to the bottom, but at an angle, what do you think? I don't know, because then it could act as a closure for my gift card holder, which would be kind of fun. This seems a little long, unless I move this over. Yeah, it's not doing it for me. Let's switch that. I think I'll do this. Yes, Wendy, Wendy you're like trying to use up all your DSP right now. I know, I feel like a mad woman. <laughs> 
<laughs> trying to use up all my stuff. But that's a good thing. I don't I don't like that stuff hanging around, sitting around. I want it to be used myself or to get it in the hands of somebody that will use it because I always know there's going to be lots more fun stuff. How's that? What do you think? Okay, how about we add a little something to the center there? Actually, you know what? Instead of doing that, I think I'm going to use Wink of Stella. I'm going to use my Wink of Stella. And I'm just going to go over some of the white icing. Just brighten it up a little bit. I know it's probably hard for you to see the effects of the Wink of Stella while I'm doing it like this because the Wink of Stella just adds a very, um, very soft to it. It's called a Wink of Stella glitter brush, but I don't really think of it as glitter, glitter because it's just so fine and subtle. Can you see some of that shimmer in there if I hold it up close? Are you seeing it? Maybe not. Doesn't seem to be showing up real well on camera, but it's there, it's there. All right, what do you think of these two gift card holders? Fun, right? And then how about the swap up feature? So your gift card would go up right here. So when the person opens it, that gift card almost pops up out at them. And that little banner is a nice little closure for our um, gift card holder. And actually, as I'm thinking about this, I could have maybe lowered this and instead of adhering this bottom ornament to the top, I could have adhered the bottom of it to the bottom flap and that could have acted like a closure if you're, if you're into that kind of thing. All right, let me bring back the other items that we made in this Facebook Live. So we did our two gift card holders. We made some cutely peppermint bark bars. And then lastly, we did some fun packaging for the, what was it, lint milk, milk chocolate truffle bar? I think that's what it was called, right? Okay, so what do you think? Are these things that you would choose to make? And don't go away yet, because I'm going to have a little giveaway. All right, so let's, um, let me just set these aside for now. Push these up here. And I'll quickly, for those of you who have maybe didn't see what we did on my December 9th Facebook Live, I'll show that very quickly, because it is basically the same thing of the treat packaging. So here is a box of candy. All of these candies and treats I got from Target. Um, super fun and easy. We just cut the paper to the width. It's a 12 inch sheet. We wrapped it, we folded over so you could, uh, instead of cutting off the extra, we folded it back so you could feature the opposite side of the DSP and added some fun embellishing. We covered Twix, Santas and peanut butter trees with some designer series paper and then stamped and colored some images from the Be Jolly stamp set. This is a package of icebreakers, um, peppermint candies or breathmints, whatever, um, sending you peppermint kisses. And then finally, we just took some small bits. This is great for scraps, all of these things. Great for using up your scraps, your last few papers, that sort of thing. Um, but we just wrapped some mini 
candy bars and then stacked them together and tied a bow. Any of these would be fun to tuck into your, maybe your gifts that you're shipping to family and friends who live away from you. Um, you could use them for coworker desks, um, secret Santas, teacher gifts, um, your Bible study group, your book club, your card club, what else? Put them at um, um, your place settings on your holiday table. Use them as stocking stuffers. All kinds of great ways to use these fun, um, fun projects. And um, this is like... I don't even want you to see this one little corner here. Oh, I can't find it. Where did I put it? I had a little sampler package. Here it is. A sampler package of the um, gingerbread and peppermint designer series paper that I would love to send to one lucky winner. So you can make some fun gift card holders or treat projects. So you're just going to get um, of all of the yummy designer series paper in that package. If you would like to be the winner of this paper sampler, would you please comment gingerbread and peppermint? Just type that in the comments, gingerbread and peppermint. And later today, I will draw the name of one lucky winner. Hi, Donna from Louisiana. Wendy says, so many great ideas, never enough time. Is that not the truth? I've been working away down here. I'm cold. My fingers are so cold. I work downstairs um, in my finished basement, but it gets cooler here than the rest of the house. And today I wore a t-shirt. I don't know why, but my fingers are cold, but I just keep working, working, working. I just want to go, go, go. Plus, I'm trying to make things for gifts and um, stockings for my own family and things like that as I'm still trying to work my business. So it's a little overwhelming at times. All right. Oh, hi there, Julie from Arizona. All of you, thank you for being here today. Um, I hope you have a fabulous weekend. Enjoy the rest of your Friday. Um, and I will see you soon. I'll be back on Monday at 11 a.m. And I've already got my projects planned. We're going to make some um, cards. And I will post the information for that because I think you might want to make these four cards along. Um, so start considering which designer series paper you would like to use for that. Um, but I'll post the information with a reminder. So I will see you Monday at 11. Until then, goodbye. Have a great weekend. Um, keep yourself and others around you safe and healthy. And um, happy card making and happy crafting. Bye-bye.